Mm. Now, when did that all begin? Well, that's an unusual story because um, at, at the time I thought it was an unusual story and I want to share that with you. But as I've gotten into this mm -hmm. uh, and, and talked to more and more people who have this disease, I'm finding that this is not an unusual story. Mine is not an unusual yeah. story, really. But let me tell you how we found out. For many years, uh, and we're, we're going back now, back to 1988 when I was first diagnosed, mm -hmm. and several years, actually many years before mm -hmm. that, you just kind of know that something is wrong in your body. You, and it's yeah. so, you know, one thing about MS that um, I'm not sure people really understand. They probably don't know much about it. No, it's, it's a very insidious disease. In fact, you know, it's been called names like the monster the beast, mm -hmm. the devil himself, and Absolutely. some names I just can't even bring up here, as you well know, because it's so insidious with people, and this is what happened with me. Uh, it, you, 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 and, and forgive my speech, this is another thing, you hang around me long enough it's and you'll okay. hear the stuttering and stuff that, that's gonna no, come that out, I'm fine. sure, but that's all right. No, you know, the Lord healed me, and here I am to tell my story, but um, we'll just get past those little bumps in the road. Um, my body just started doing odd things uh, and I was young I was in my 20s you know the, wow. the numbness uh, in particularly the right side of my body mm -hmm. it started with my right arm and my right leg but particularly with the legs I would stumble Mm. Um, I'd even fall down. Um, I was very clumsy. Um, uh, one nickname for me was, this is true, was the klutz. Uh, I was very accident prone Not and so you. I had all these labels attached to me. And uh, <laughs> I would have one thing that I remember very clearly was one symptom was um, I would have tremors. Oh and my. yeah, we would have tremors. And um, when I would go to serve a cup of tea or a cup of coffee with, with yes, and the tea and the cup and the saucer would all spill because it was uncontrollable. So these were the types of insidious things that the MS would would bring upon me, as it brings upon many, many, many people around the world today. I would come to find out mm -hmm. as time goes on. So I was first diagnosed, there was the, the formal diagnosis came, by the way, after the accumulation of all that I've mentioned, right. um, to the point where, you know, it, it looked as though I was just kind of little, kind of weird, you know, mm -hmm. and people would expect that, like, what's wrong with Sue Ellen? Yeah. She never was clumsy like that, you know, she's always falling down or bumping into things, uh, knocking things off the table by accident, yes, it became quite embarrassing. But what actually culminated in the actual formal medical diagnosis was I was in an automobile accident in oh 1988. Yes, thankfully nothing was broken, yeah. I was in one piece, it was well, just one good. of those things and um, everything turned out okay. But we had to go through all these t different tests uh -huh, I hear you. and one thing that um, my insurance policy uh, insisted on was that I go through this MRI and various other uh, tests that, that they have in the medical field. One of them was an MRI okay. to rule out, this was for insurance purposes now, okay. to rule out the possibility that I could have multiple sclerosis and so they did. And I don't know if anybody's had an MRI. You know what I'm talking about. It's oh, they have an uh, open one and a closed one. That closed one's terrible. I well, back in the day, yeah, back then, yeah, it was closed, the closed one, and yeah. that was no pink tea party. No, I did like not like that. It's like you're in a coffin. I yes. know. Yes, yes, that makes a loud noise. A I lot understand. of noise. I know yeah. that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was no fun. But um, yeah, and and I'll I'll never forget. You know, you wait a few hours yeah, for. Right. And I was at my next physical therapy session, and right. here comes the doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, what a nice man he was. And uh, here also comes uh, the nurse. And mm -hmm. I had really come to know this nurse. She was just a, just a doll, a delight. And she'd really helped me, uh, you know, it, not only in the caregiving aspect, but, you know, as, as a good friend. And just a lot. Well, she was serious. They both looked morbid. And I thought, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, they look morbid. What's next? And they actually took me in the in the room, in the, the the next room away mm -hmm. from the other uh, mm -hmm. patients, and they sat me down, and the doctor started to explain to me in doctor language, this medical language, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, I'm not a doctor, I don't understand all these things, so I just said saying. to him, you know, doctor, please right. just tell me what's on your mind, right. and the little nurse was just wringing her hands, you know, and. 
um, he said, Sue Ellen, I'm sorry to tell you this, but all indications are by the, from the MRI and the other tests that we mm -hmm. have run, mm -hmm. you have multiple sclerosis. But you didn't even know what that was. I didn't know what MS yeah. was. So it was like, okay, well, what do I do? How do That's I get rid right. of this? And that really but was my no reaction. there's no cure, is no. there? Then I realized why they brought me into this room mm -hmm. and sat me down alone. Then I, I realized what that was all about because he talked to me like a Dutch uncle. And he told me there is no cure. That's right. And I looked at him and I said, uh, oh, of course there is. You know, I've always been a very positive-minded person. Good for you. Um, and the attitude was, oh, I'm going to beat this thing and all that. Well, he sort of, um, I, in his own dear way, went along with me, but he also really laid everything out on the table and said, look, dear, this is, you have to face reality. And um, the nurse chimed in, and she basically said the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I remember leaving there uh, and going to see friends and close friends and relatives. And some of them, these people were in the know. They knew what multiple sclerosis was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, they basically repeated what the doctor and the nurse had told yeah, me. Yeah, you deteriorate. Yes. Go down. But you know what, Margie? What? Um, even though what happens next, and we're going to talk about that, even though uh -huh. things did take a big slide downhill and a downturn, mm -hmm. the entire time I knew, and going back to what we talked about, when did you let Jesus and the Lord into mm -hmm. your life, that stayed with me, and I believe from that moment, from the moment I was in the room with the do that doctor and that nurse, mm -hmm. I knew God had a plan. Yes. And you believe. No, you believe. I believed, and oh. I would not let go of that belief.